I just prepared a lot of screenshots to uh, give you an idea of the possibilities of both uh, the World Register of Marine Species and the African Register of Marine Species. Both portals are very similar and uh, I'll go through all the similarities and then just uh, explain a little bit where the differences uh, might be. So first of all, if you would go to uh, marinespecies.org, which is the link to, uh, to worms, this is your homepage, this is what you get. And um, very easy, you get an, a news overview. Um, we also have a Twitter account, which keeps you up to date of the latest new additions to the system. And we also have a, and again, okay. We also have a very easy search interface on the first uh, page where you can either search on a common name, which can be the English, the French, or uh, the German, for example, name of a species. And you can also uh, search on the scientific name. Um, what I've done is I've used the basic uh, interface of worms, but each time when you see Afremas next to it, then it's similar in both portals. So the actions that you can do are uh, likewise. So just to talk you through, for example, a worm's uh, taxon search. So you can search either on a scientific name or a common name, which you can indicate here in the first fields. You can also indicate if the name that you're looking for actually begins with those letters or that combination um, contains a certain uh, word or the complete name of the species. What we always recommend is to uh, use either the begins with or the contains. And if you're not sure about the name, just cut off a few letters at the end, have the begins with search, and then mostly you can get the possible answers to your query. Um, so here I uh, gave the example, we look for something that begins with Echino, and then if you hit the search button, you get an overview. So in this case, uh, Worms contains almost 1,400 matching records, which means that almost 1,400 names actually begin with Echino. That can be both species or genera or family, any uh, classification in the or any level of the hierarchy can be there. If you then click on a specific name, in this case I chose uh, Echino, Cardium cordatum, you get an overview of the information that we have available. Now, I mentioned yesterday that WORMS is uh, a taxonomic database, so most of the information that you will get is taxonomy related. And it starts here, for example, with the full classification, going from the kingdom to the level that you are at, the genus or the species. And um, I also said it's yesterday that um, it's a quality controlled system or it's an expert controlled system. And in this case, everywhere where you see a little green, like, V, I don't know how they call it in English, tick, thank you. <laughs> uh, everywhere you see one of those green ticks, that means that the name or the information that you see there has been checked by an expert. If you see a question mark, like here at the top for the Echinozoa, this means that the information there has not yet been checked by a taxonomic expert. That does not mean it's wrong, but the expert just hasn't looked at it yet. Okay. Um, important also, I also mentioned yesterday that we follow international standards and we use an, um, an identifier, which is unique, and that's the AFIA ID is what we call it. So that's always at the top uh, of the page, just below the, the name. Uh, you can also see here the status of the name. This one is an accepted name, so it's still in use the rank, the parent, if synonyms are known for that species, then they will also be listed there. Um, this is just very brief how it works. What I would recommend is this afternoon or tomorrow when we are doing the exercises, is just take a species name that you know that appears locally in your region, enter it into the system and see what it does, see what kind of information you get back. Just play with the system to get to know it, to, to get familiar with it. Okay, so the first search I mentioned was a very basic one. You just enter a name. We also have an advanced search, uh, which looks like this. And uh, 
it's just frustrating with the arrow. Okay, the search here, the first level is the same. So you can either do a scientific or a common name, begins with, contains, or is in full. You enter your name. Um, here you could say, I only want the accepted names or the unaccepted names, for example. Um, you can also say, I only want to see the taxa that are not yet been checked by an expert. You can select on your environment. I also said yesterday that worms, as the name says it itself, is mostly a marine register, but it already contains a lot of non-marine species or species that are specific for the brackish region. Um, some editors are also adding freshwater and terrestrial species. So if you want, you could be more specific in the environment that you're looking for. Now, the nice thing now is that you can combine things. You can, for example, say taxon rank means that give me all the entries which are, in this case, lower or equal to the kingdom. More useful in your search would be to say give me all the taxa which are lower or equal to species level. And then you could say limit the next one. Where's the arrow? Okay. The next one then could be limit those taxa that you're requesting to a specific group. So what you would be able to say, for example, is give me all the taxa lower or equal to species that belong to the mollusca or that belong to the fish or that belong to the sponges. This is a kind of query that, uh, that you can do. But again, also here, I would recommend later in this week, just go to the website and give it a try. See what the possibilities are. And if you have any questions, just let me know and we can look at it together. So this is the taxon search. Uh, next to the search, uh, Worms and Afremas also offer a taxon tree, which means that we simply list the higher classification um, of all living things. And you can just click on the pluses before the kingdom, which will open them further up. And then you also get an overview of the species. Uh, this example, I just, this is probably a bit small to read, but I just clicked open this one here, Artaya, and then you get the whole overview from kingdom to genus uh, to, get, to give you an idea what is available within the system. Now, next to taxonomic information, Worms also has sources, which are references, PDFs, and so on. And the search interface for the sources is very similar to the one for the taxa. And you could, for example, look for a source name. The example I'm giving here starts with African, for example. And uh, interesting here is that you can define the usage of that source within the system. And by that, I mean that if we link a source to a species or to a certain bit of information, we always identify what information that source is containing. For example, if we have an original description of a species, then we will link that reference to the species as the original description, which means that in this case, it would be very easy to list all the original descriptions that we have available within the system. Um, original description is the one that we aim to document as much as possible, but we could also have, for example, the source of synonymy. If your species is a synonym of another species name, then the source of that synonymy can be documented within the system. You can request that. Also, redescriptions, new combination references, and so on. You don't have to use that as a selection criterion, but you could if you would be interested in specific sources. So we've looked now for African and left everything else blank, which gives us 1,004 sources that contain or that start with African in the, or that have African in the title. And I think I, okay, I clicked one open. So I think I just took the first one here. Uh, the first reference, if you click on it, you get more information on the reference. So again, each source also has a unique identifier within the system. The full name, the type, Type is very simple. We either have a publication, a database, or an expert. Those are the three options that we are dealing with. And for publications, and this is interesting if you make use of the system, is that if there's a link available to the DOI or to an online uh, accessible PDF, then this is listed here. So if the PDF would be freely available, you can have easy access to it. 
for each source that is linked to species, we also list the species that are um, in that reference. So in this case, again, here it says that this is the original description for that specific species. If any distributions have been extracted from that publication, this is also listed here. And also nice is that you can always see when the source has been added to the system and by who. If you would have questions or if you would be like, mm, this doesn't look very right, then uh, we also have some, some background information on that. Um, distributions is also something that you can search for. So again, all the search interfaces look very similar. So it's a matter of using the system a couple of times, getting used to what it can do. So you can enter your geographical area that you want to search. And again, also here you can say within that area or region, I'm only interested in, for example, the sponge species, which you can, uh, where's the arrow, which you can define here in those two options. Now, nice here is that distributions can have different uh, statuses by which I mean that, um, and here we get back basically to the misidentifications in some cases. For example, a source will say that species A has been found in the Mediterranean and in the Atlantic. I'm just saying something here. But the taxonomic expert says like, that occurrence in the Mediterranean is not correct. That species does not occur there. So what we can do in worms is flag that Mediterranean distribution as being not correct or doubtful, two different options. And so here in the search interface, you have the option, struggling with the arrow again, you have the option to say, I only want valid distribution records, or I also want to include the doubtful ones because you want to have a look at it more in more detail before you decide if you want to use it or not. And um, also for uh, synonyms, if you would say, give me all the species within the sponges, you can say, I'm only interested in the distributions of the accepted species, or I'm interested in um, both, both the accepted and the synonyms, but you can choose uh, which sorting order you want in your result file. So an example, uh, we're looking at the Kenyan exclusive economic zone. We're only looking at the species. We're only looking at accepted species names and only at valid distribution records. This is what that specific window is saying. And then if we hit the search button, we get 385 matching records. And I'm looking at the people from Kenya. Could that be more or less correct or <laughs> should it be a lot more? I'm guessing it should be more. So this also shows you that the system is, is not complete yet. But anyways, you get your list and again, you can click on each of those names to go through the species page and get your information that you're looking for. Um, what Worms specifically offers that is not incorporated within Afremas, but if that would be needed for Afremas, uh, we could do that, is the taxon match which means that if you have your own species list, you can upload it to the website and the website will match it with what is available within our system and give you the results back. I won't go into details in this right now because that comes this afternoon, uh, specifically in the quality control session and I'll have an example then and walk you through it, but just so you already know that it's there. Uh, both Worms and Afremas list statistics so you get an ID, um, mostly on the phylum level, how many taxa there are, how many species, how many accepted species, how many non-marine species, and how many of those taxa are actually already checked by a taxonomic editor. Just to give you an idea of what is available in the system and what the current um, status is on uh, it being checked or not. Very nice on worms is the image gallery, the picture gallery that we have. Um, it's organized in larger groups. You can go Antozoa, the birds. And if you click through, you get more detailed groups and you can click through to um, images on, on species level, basically. 
very nice if you're making a report or doing presentations and you need some nice pictures. It's always a, a good place to go. Now, Afremas, the interface of Afremas, this is what you get when you go to the website. Um, one very important statistic is already there. Currently, we have documented a little bit more than 24,000 accepted species names within Afremas. And I'm guessing after this week, we'll be able to add a lot more. Um, everything I showed you earlier in the, in the talk on the search interfaces are, is here at the top. So if you search for taxa, you go there. If you want to use the tree, if you want to search for the literature. Checklist here corresponds to the geographic search. So if you want to look for species within a specific region, then that's the checklist that you need to use. Uh, statistics are also there and the login is limited um, everything on worms and afremas is freely accessible you never need to log in the login is only there for our taxonomic editors who are spread all over the world and who just log in to the website to make the changes and the additions um, this has already been uh, mentioned a couple of times if you have something that you cannot find in worms or afremas what do you do you just send us an email we know that both worms and afremas are incomplete and we also here at the data center at this strive to make the system as complete as possible but we can only do that uh, by getting input from people that are either familiar with the region familiar with the group or that are working with um, specific species groups. So if you do find something that's not there or you're not sure or you have doubts, please just send us an email. And um, normally within a couple of days, we are able to give you an answer or let you know that the expert is looking at it because we cannot always solve it ourselves. We also have to contact our experts and then depending on their agendas and availability, um, it can take a couple of days to a couple of weeks before uh, we get any answers. These are the URLs of both uh, websites. So uh, very easy, actually. You have marinespecies.org. If you want to go to Afremas, you just add Afremas at the end of the link. That was it. Are there any questions on the... Uh... I've got a question that I actually, I've got the answer from Ward already, but I thought it might be interesting. I, what I found, I found um, one or two species where there's a discrepancy between worms and ogres for the accepted name. Yes. So which one, of course I need to inform you guys, but this one Yes, is the one please I do. Um, worms. Trust worms. Because worms is the taxonomic backbone of obis. Uh, worms and obis are synchronizing, but with a time lag of two or three months. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mike. No, but still, if you find that, send us an email, let us know, because then we are able to, to fix it, I think, within the hour to make it more or less. <laughs> I'm being too optimistic. <laughs> no, but we, we can fix it faster than having to wait for the next synchronization or having to wait for the manual process to be completed. Uh, <laughs> I live in Africa, I use worms just because it's, yes. I, I can't even say why, because I actually knew of Afromas before I knew of worms, but it's mm -hmm. just... It's, um, worms is everything, everything, everywhere. And what we have, and this is both for the global species list, like the, I'm saying something, the World Sponge database, or the regional Afremas, or European, or Antarctic system, is that sometimes it's easier for people if they kind of have a little box on worms that only shows the information that they are interested in. 
Um, it's for visibility. It's for uh, sometimes to help get funding for specific uh, things that they do want that own view on the system. And for Afrimas, it was also specifically to, to promote the whole um, exercise of creating an African register and giving it a face, um, not only on the internet by that specific pages, but also having a specific uh, editorial board for Afrimas to, to be able to show to people that there's really um, a community that's really working on that specific part. So if I plan to, I can probably say introduce like Ovis, Worms, Aphromas, everything. When I come in for Mission Annual Science Forum, should I go for Aphromas and just mention Worms? So sort of, mm -hmm. you know, there's also a global one. Yes. Because anything that's in, in, in the African species that are Aphromas, they're also, all, that are Worms are all in Aphromas. They should be, that yeah. Has more than African species now. It should not. We're still checking that because that's also a process of checking. Because if we want a species to be in the Afrimas pages, we really have to check them as being this is an African species. While it might happen that we upload distributions from a some source that has African distributions in it, they get added to the species, but the species does not automatically get checked as an African or an Afrimas species. But what I would recommend, for example, if you are going to present Afrimas and the link with worms, is use one of the schemes that I showed yesterday, where you have worms as a whole, and then the global and the thematic and the regional lists that should give. And from there, you can continue with your view on Afrimas. Yeah. I might get back to you then for some OK, advice. that's no problem. No. So. Please promote Afrimas, but do make the link yeah. with Worms, because Worms is, is the global system the that supports it. Africa. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Is time delay between information that gets uploaded into the system? No. No. The moment it goes in Worms and we say it's Afrimas, it's also on Afrimas. There's no time delay. That's the big advantage of the whole online system. Each species name is in the, is in the system once. And that one name can appear in seven different registers. A national one, a regional one, a thematic one. But it's still one and the same entry within the database. And that makes it very easy for us to maintain and also for the editors. Because if they make a taxonomic change, they only have to do it at one place, and automatically it goes. So is it just two front ends? Then? There's two front ends, yes. There's one on worms, and, and there's one on the local, <laughs> or the regional, or the thematic database, yes. More questions? <coughs> Everything clear? Yay! <laughs> oh, yes? Sylvie? Sylvie? Uh, I have two questions, I have uh, uh, the distribution. I just want to want to see it on the music list. Yes. That's all. That's for Ursula. For the, for the distribution. That's Afrobis. We can do something with that for Afrobis. You have the data with you? Yes. That's for tomorrow then. Tomorrow and Thursday. Everybody can work on their own data. So that's good. We'll have a look then. <laughs> 